Hi, I'm Bethany Russell, director of the Mission Gate Academy. Today we're diving deep into the importance of cardiovascular endurance training and the role it plays in rehabilitation for peripheral neuropathy. So why is this relevant to walking? Well, the changes in your gait pattern that occur with peripheral neuropathy reduce the efficiency of your walking pattern, so it'll take more energy to walk the same distance. And for many people with peripheral neuropathy, walking requires a higher percentage of their maximum efforts. The key to walking as far as you want and as fast as you want is to first have the capacity to do so. To build that capacity up, you need sufficient flexibility, strength, and balance, all of which I'll cover in other videos, but also basic endurance. Improving your walking pattern and then repetitively walking with that new, better pattern is a lot of work. Therefore, you really need some endurance capacity if you're going to be able to succeed at the rest of your rehabilitation. The other reason this is so important is that it addresses the root of why peripheral neuropathy impacts walking. Neuropathy slows down how fast signals can travel up and down nerves, and a typical step while walking occurs in just half of a second. That's not a lot of time to adjust to changes in the environment or something that throws off your balance. Research suggests that patients who engage in a high quality exercise program for a consistent period of time will see benefits from the program, especially after about eight weeks, and the program may actually improve the signal speed in their nerves. This type of exercise may also allow some to regenerate some nerve fibers, and it can reduce pain and somewhat improve sensation as well as improve circulation. Now, none of these can fully reverse or cure peripheral neuropathy. However, at the time of this video, there aren't any medications that can cure neuropathy, just medications to help with the symptoms. So it's my opinion that a safe and appropriate exercise program may be the best medicine currently available to fight peripheral neuropathy. Cardiovascular endurance exercise options are diverse. You don't have to do one type. The only requirement to get the benefits of cardiovascular exercise is continuous and repetitive movement of large muscle groups. If you have concerns about the skin in your feet, like a history of wounds, amputation, or Charcot joint, then a recumbent bike is often a great non-weight bearing choice. For others, walking in your community, swimming, or participating in a group exercise class at your local gym might be more appealing. The key is finding something that you can do comfortably and consistently, which is why many people choose brisk walking in their community. To get the full benefits of cardiovascular exercise, it needs to be a consistent habit. So the best type is the one that you'll do again tomorrow. Let's talk about exercise intensity. We often use the Borg RPE scale to gauge how hard you're working. The RPE, or Rate of Perceived Exertion Scale, is a subjective scale that runs from 6 to 20 and is a proven way to manage exercise intensity. Usually, we want to shoot for moderate intensity. This has been proven to be safe even for people with a wide variety of chronic conditions. Although, of course, you'll still want to check in with your doctor before starting a new exercise program if you have any medical concerns. Now, moderate intensity is going to be different for each person. Someone who's recovering from a major medical event may find that walking one lap around their living room or performing some continuous seated exercise is a moderate level exertion for them. While on the other end of the spectrum, endurance runners may feel that jogging a few miles feels moderate. That's why it's called perceived exertion. You're going to pick an intensity level that makes you notice that your heart rate and your breathing are increased, and you may not be able to sing or tell a long story, but you could speak enough for a simple conversation. If you haven't exercised in a while, you can certainly start with light intensity and gradually work your way up to moderate intensity as tolerated. For a relatively healthy person, an easy stroll or moving around your house doing basic chores will not raise your heart rate enough to give the benefits that you can get from moderate intensity exercise. I'm frequently told, well, I'm active during the day, moving around my house, so that counts as my exercise. And while that type of movement is very beneficial and certainly much better for your health than being totally sedentary, to obtain the benefits that I'm talking about, building the capacity to improve your gait pattern, being able to walk farther, fighting the detrimental effects of neuropathy, and increasing your endurance, those benefits do require you to invest time into structured exercise at an exertion level that's high enough to challenge you. Another crucial aspect is amount. There's this magic number that comes up a lot, 150 minutes or two and a half hours per week, and for good reason. The American Heart Association recommends all adults participate in 150 minutes total per week of cardiovascular exercise. And the research studies that found all those great benefits in people with peripheral neuropathy 
Their participants stuck to 150 minutes or more per week consistently for multiple months. Now the good news is that any amount of exercise is measurably better than none. So you start with what you can handle and gradually build up. Consistency is key for another reason. People with peripheral neuropathy are unfortunately at much higher risk of foot wounds, which can have very serious consequences. Something that even further increases risk of wounds is if someone with peripheral neuropathy suddenly greatly increases their physical activity level. Therefore, if you haven't been exercising and you're looking to start, it's extremely important that you start small and very gradually increase the amount of exercise that you perform. To lower your risk of wounds, proper footwear is vital. If you have a diagnosis of neuropathy, I strongly recommend that you choose your shoes together with a qualified professional, a physical therapist, podiatrist, or a certified orthotist. Some of the basics that apply to many people but need to be adjusted for each individual foot are as follows. To start at an absolute minimum, if possible, people with neuropathy should never exercise in non-athletic shoes. These types of shoes that fit very tightly to my foot and squeeze my toes against each other or offer no protection or have no rigidity in the sole. These types of shoes will do nothing to reduce your risk for wounds. If you have access, at least start with closed toed shoes with some but not excessive cushioning and a supportive sole. Even if you're exercising in a pool, you should likely wear water shoes whenever possible. To get into some detail about what an ideal athletic shoe might look like, one, the front of the shoe, called the toe box, needs to be wide enough and deep enough so that my toes are not touching the sides or being squeezed. Now that's not the same thing as a wide width shoe where the whole shoe is wider. If my heel and the middle of my foot are not a wide size and I get a size wide shoe, then my foot might slide around in the shoe, which could cause friction and blisters. So I look for athletic shoes with an appropriate shape, wider space for my toes than my heel. Secondly, many people with neuropathy develop toe curling, which means they'll need to look for a feature called extra depth so that the top of the shoe is not pressing down on the top of their toes. Extra depth shoes are also more likely to, to leave enough room in the shoe to add any type of orthotic that you might need. Three, many people with neuropathy benefit from using custom insoles to protect the structural integrity of the foot. The reason is that without this, if my, ar if my arch rests up above the sole of my shoe, that means the pressure of my weight is spread across a smaller area of my foot. With a proper insole made for my foot, sort of bringing the ground up to my arch, now the pressure from my body weight is spread out across more area, helping to protect vulnerable spots on the bottom of my foot from extra pressure. Now there's much that can be said about this topic, but the main point is that every foot is different and neuropathic feet need to be protected by appropriate shoes and insoles chosen by a qualified professional. Now another vital aspect is of course safety and skin checks. After every exercise session, it's vital to check your feet. Use a hand mirror if necessary to inspect your entire foot for cuts, blisters, or redness, which can indicate pressure areas or the beginning of a wound. If you spot any issues, hold off on increasing your exercise and consider switching to a, a method like recumbent cycling that's non-weight bearing until you can consult with your healthcare provider. However, if your skin remains clear, you're not just avoiding immediate problems, research suggests you may be reducing your future risk of wounds. Improving your walking efficiency and endurance through cardiovascular training is a journey. It takes patience, effort, and the right approach, but the rewards, better mobility, reduced symptoms, and potentially a higher quality of life are worth it. This video is part of a series on rehabilitation for peripheral neuropathy. We encourage you to view our other videos in this series and to share them as well. You can find them on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash missiongate. To stay up to date on our latest content, click the link in the corner to subscribe and be sure to like and share this video. And if you enjoyed this content and found it helpful, please consider joining the mission and donating using the link below or using the donate button on our website www.missiongate.org. We love providing this information free of charge to anyone using the YouTube platform, and it's all thanks to our generous donors and sponsors who truly see the value of this information. How about you?